Welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and this is a review of The Independent. This is currently available on Peacock, and uh, it does have audio description. I'm a blind film critic, so I do watch films with audio description. So we'll talk about the audio description at the end, but first let's talk about the film a little bit. Uh, the film stars Jodie Turner-Smith, Brian Cox, John Cena, and Dowd, and Luke Kirby, and also Stephen Lang sort of. But, um, so you're probably wondering, why haven't I heard of this film? <laughs> I wondered that same thing, because, uh, I'm actually a huge fan of Brian Cox, so this film was always going to be, like, uh, you know, slightly looked on positively, simply because I, he's my favorite actor. And I have to, I'm acknowledging the bias straight up front, uh, there's, there's no way around that. So, I love Brian Cox. Uh, I love Succession. I've loved his acting. Uh, I think he's such an underrated character actor, and I can't wait for the day when he gets an Oscar nomination. Um, so, but this film, unfortunately, I don't know with even with this cast, I don't know why they just dumped it. Uh, they just <laughs> just got rid of this film. It was uh, it it involves a journalist played by Jodie Turner Smith who's sort of new. She's on the lower end of, of the totem pole. She's working at a newspaper, which is slowly being degraded, like most newspapers are in the country. And uh, a whole bunch of the writers are being forced to write clickbait articles, like top 20 things to bring to your college dorm room. So, um, and she hears of a story about a West Virginia high school that is reducing the amount of days it goes from five to four because they don't have enough money to keep the school open and the school is 90% minority in West Virginia. I didn't even know that was a high, uh, that was a possibility of percentage in West Virginia, but that's the story we're going with. So, um, and there's this whole pushback uh, on even chasing the article for all of the various reasons that you would think it's about minorities and who cares. Uh, it's, you know, uh, it's West Virginia and who cares? You know, so they don't really want the article, uh, chased down. Uh, Stephen Lang plays the, I guess, the editor of this newspaper. And Brian Cox is the guy who works at the newspaper who's basically like Bob Woodward. Um, he's the, he's the guy that has such like a reputation that he can say what I and say and do whatever he wants and he's never gonna get fired. Like they fire other journalists who are less famous than him, but like everybody's always like, Ooh, what's his opinion? And it's <laughs> so you get the, the idea, you know, he's always appearing on, on other news and talk shows, giving his, uh, journalistic integrity speeches. Um, that this guy is a big deal. So the best comparison I could come up with this fictional character is Bob Woodward. So he's like that. Uh, you just don't fire Bob Woodward. <laughs> so they're firing everybody but Bob Woodward. <laughs> um, and this girl, she's low in the totem pole and she's chasing the story and she kind of stumbles into a larger story. It's also in the middle of a presidential campaign uh, there are multiple people running for president, and Dowd happens to be one of them. Uh, so she end up, ends up interviewing and Dowd a lot. But there's also a new, exciting, independent candidate. Yes, that's where we get the title of the film. And it's John Cena. And he seems really charming. And he seems very, um, you know, uh, good. He plays an Olympian. Uh, he's perfectly cast for the role in which he's been given. He's supposed to be charming and and uh, also the kind of person you could believe was an Olympic athlete. <laughs> so he checks those two boxes. I never thought I'd see a film where it's like a John Cena for president, but we're here. Um, and Luke Kirby is her boyfriend. And you might remember Luke Kirby because he's on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And he's the boyfriend, and he also works on John Cena's campaign. So uh, there's a little bit of a, 
a twisty thing that happens and something about the political campaign ends up coming to, uh, coming across Jodie Turner-Smith's desk and suddenly she's got herself a story. So she and Brian Cox work together with her, with him mentoring her, um, to try to break this news story that will shake the world. Literally. Um, no. So, it's that kind of a film. It's got kind of a spotlight vibe to it. Um, if I had to give it a comp, like a comparison to something else, that would probably be the closest thing I could get, just like a journalist film. Uh, the Paper is another film that, that kind of comes to mind, the Michael Keaton 90s film. Um, so, that's, that's the vibe. I liked it. I, I, would, I think I would have liked this film even if Brian Cox wasn't in it, because it still has a good cast. It still has Anne Dowd, first of all. Like, I mean, I know I talk a lot about Brian Cox because he was phenomenal in his role. He was great in this sort of mentor, sort of like, fuck off type role. It's, it's very, very much a Brian Cox role uh, <laughs> that they cast him in. This is not, you know, he's not playing somebody who likes gardening or something like that. This is a bold... Um, not afraid to get in your face type of role for Brian Cox. And he's great in it. And Jody Turner Smith is actually really good too. She has this whole subplot storyline with her family that, that helps give her character sort of an emotional depth. Um, and Dowd is, you know, she's always good. She's, uh, for those of you who are like, who, and Dowd, who that? Um, she's Aunt Lydia on The Handmaid's Tale. And she's also been great in other things. She was in The Leftovers, which is on HBO. And I loved her in Compliance. I thought she missed out on an Oscar nomination for Compliance. Um, that was when Ann Dowd first really just smacked me in the face and made me not forget her. But also, last year, she was on my list of why the fuck wasn't she nominated for Mass? <laughs> why? <laughs> I'm not letting that die. I will not let it die. Mass was amazing. Mass deserved an Oscar nomination. Mass deserves many Oscar nominations. Mass deserved a Best Picture nomination. Mass deserved uh, Jason Isaacs, Ann Dowd, Martha Plimpton. You know, just nominations. Uh, just, I, I don't care. Eight of them. However many you can give Mass. Mass was the film that should have been all over the place. And I don't know what happened. I just really don't. I have no idea. I still look back and I'm like, did they, did they not get the screeners to the voters? <sighs> so frustrating. It was an incredible movie, and it should have been Ann Dowd's first Academy Award nomination, and it wasn't. <sighs> so, she's in The Independent, which is being shoved onto Peacock, so she's still going to have to wait a little while for her first Oscar nomination, as will Brian Cox. Two actors who both have worked too hard to not be nominated for an Academy Award while we're sitting around talking about will Timothy Chalamet get his second Academy Award nomination, Brian Cox and Van Dowd have never been nominated. Maybe we should think about that. So, this is a uh, much better film than you would think it is for a film that got dumped on the peacock. I would say give it a shot, even though it's got, it wants you to make a giant leap and think that John Cena could play a presidential candidate. He actually does it quite well. Um, so don't, I've had the same reaction. I was like, John Cena's playing a presidential candidate. Um, I don't know about this, but he surprised me and it worked. So, uh, the audio description for this film was a little underdeveloped for me. I didn't get a chance to catch who did it at the end. Peacock always does this thing. Well, not always. It's twice let me actually get to the end of the credits. So I know it's not my settings because it does... It has let me get to the end credits twice. In the entire time I've ever watched a film on Peacock, I've made it to the very end to be able to catch the narrator twice. Um, this was not one of those times. As soon as the credits started, I don't even think I got... I didn't even get, like, the first name. It was like the film was over, and, like, it was about to roll credits... And, like, I just, Peacock sucked me out and started shoving me into something else. So, um, I don't even know if there are credits to this film. 
<laughs> so I have no idea who narrated this, but there definitely felt like times where there could have been more. Um, I know the film is dialogue heavy, so you could, uh, you could kind of say that's why something didn't happen and just use that as an easy excuse. But it did feel like there were some times where I was going a long time without hearing a narrator. But then when I did hear the narrator, the balance was louder than I expected, louder than usual. Um, the audio description is louder than the film in a noticeable way, I would say, which could be a Peacock thing. But I mean, to not be an audio description narrator thing. Could have been after the narration was turned in, Peacock had to assemble the track or something, and they... I have no idea. I don't know this technological stuff. All I know is, for a film that's basically a drama, uh, the audio description was ready for it to be, like, Transformers fighting the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. So... Just lots of loud noises. It was ready for that. But it never gets there, so I don't... I don't know. I don't know what it was waiting for. Um, so, I, I mean, I would rather hear the audio description than not hear the audio description. So if that's an option, I, I'd rather have it louder than softer. So, cool. But I did notice that there it wasn't balanced like it typically is. Those are my thoughts on the honor description for this film. But I like this film. Uh, I, I liked it a lot better than I think most people would. Um, it's not, I will agree, uh, when, when you're talking about shelving a film and kind of just getting it out there and not pushing it or something like that. It doesn't feel like anything revolutionary. Like we've, like we've never seen this film before and thank God for this perspective. But it was clever. And it was well made and it was well acted. And those should be enough things in this day and age to still get a film a noticeable release and not just a dump on a streaming service release. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to give uh, the, the Independent a B. Plus. That's my review for that. Uh, Anyway, so if you've stayed this long, please think about subscribing. I'm trying to get to 100 by the end of the year. That would be great. Um, and also, I have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can go to that. Check me out. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. And you can look up your favorite films. It is user uploaded, so it doesn't have full and complete information like IMDb does. But um, I think maybe the dream is that one day uh, the industry will recognize. They used to be able to be credited on IMDb. They're not allowed anymore. So now they have their own website where they can list their credits and resumes. <sighs> it's very sad. It's very sad how we get treated in this world. So um, anyway, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I will go do another for you, and I will see you on the other side.